And now, Martin Yan, the Chinese chef. Ni hao ma, that's how are you in Cantonese. Just in case you didn't know who posed for the animation. That's me, Martin Yan. Live and in color. <laughs> and we're ready to take you on a gastronomic tour of China. I don't know what your menu is, but my menu is egg treasure winter melon soup, steamed sea bass, and sizzling black bean chicken. These are all typical Cantonese dishes. It's a can make it as a complete menu. First, we start, of course, with the soup. Egg treasure winter melon soup. If you have six treasure, you have six treasure winter melon soup. You have 15 different things. You have 15 treasure winter melon soup. Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't care. My mother doesn't care. My grandmother never cares anyway. First of all, I want to show you what kind of ingredient that we use in this particular dish. You start with a winter melon, okay? And then you also come over here, we have some crab meat, about a quarter of a pound of crab meat. You can use about two to four ounces of lean pork and also half of a chicken breast and some prawn four to six prawns, all depends on how many people you have. And also some dry mushroom, they call shiitake in some Japanese stores. And also straw mushroom. You can actually buy straw, fresh straw mushroom in some store, but you gotta go all the way to the Far East to get it. <laughs> and also some green peas. And also some Virginia or Smithfield ham. Basically, this is a very simple, very refreshing dish because this is also a formal dinner banquet dish. I want to show you a little bit about this winter melon. The reason why they call this winter melon is during the winter, the darn thing goes south. <laughs> and also, I'm not quite sure you notice that there's a lot of powder when you buy the winter melon. You notice that there's a lot of white powder here. This are like a snow powder. When I was a little kid, I learned how to ski around here. <laughs> I want to show you how it looks from inside. See, it looks like this. And I'm going to cut it open. I want to show you how it looks inside. Look, you got seats here, and you got this. And when you touch this, all the powder come in because the powder is more or less like a preservative because the bugs won't like this. That's why one of these, if you keep it in a cool, dry place, you can keep it for a long, long time, up to three months if you keep it in a dry, cool place. Some of these are approximately 10 pounds. Some of these are 18 pounds. Some of these up to 50 to 60 pounds. You've got to be a very strong cook <laughs> to use this. In fact, I'm not quite sure how many of you know that in China, they use this for the athletes when they practice and get ready for the Olympic shot put. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how easy it is. Let's trim the skin off. Trim the seat out like this, okay? And then you can cut this into little pieces like this. No big deal. <laughs> and you set it aside. Now, I also want to show you, we're gonna cut up some mushroom. Trim this. First, you take the stem, because it's tough. After you take the stem off, nothing will stem from this anymore. Now, for the straw mushroom, it looks like a little baby with a little helmet. Look at this, it's kind of cute. <laughs> and you cut this right in half like this. 
okay, cut it in half and put it aside. Here, I have a part of broth. Heat it up. First, I'm going to put mushroom, shredded or cube or dice. Ham, straw mushroom. And then I also use the winter melon. Put it right here. Let it bring to a boil because you want to make sure it has enough time to cook. And in the meantime, I want to show you how you can quickly cut the chicken. One, two, three. Stack them all up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put them all together, set aside right here. You can marinate this. You don't want to put it right here. Then I will put it right there. And then we're going to marinate this with a tiny bit of soy sauce, with a tiny bit of sesame seed oil, with a tiny bit of egg white, OK? Egg white. Give the seal and the juice. Give that nice, smooth texture. Sure. Take it up. And also, I have some shrimp here. OK? Also mix them all up. Some pork here. Mix them all up. Stir it. Stir it. And then, I'm going to put it over here. And then, bring it to a boil. When you bring this to a boil, when this is bring it to a boil, it doesn't take too long to cook because you do not want to overcook them, OK? Now, you put the crab meat in in the last minute when it's almost done. And when it's done, you're going to serve it in this bowl. Let me show you. We're going to serve in this wonderful thing here. Look at this. See that? You carve the whole winter melon. Of course, you can. If you don't have one of these, if you don't know how to carve these, no big deal. You serve it right here. Let me show you. Serve it right here. Just as good. See, I'm going to show you. You can serve it right over here. Why I am dishing this out? I notice June over there have a question for us. Yes, Martin. How do you know if fish is fresh? Very easy. Pick it up, look at it, and ask, how about it? <laughs> no, basically, fresh fish, first of all, it should have a very nice, pleasant, fishy aroma. Does not smell fishy. If, if it smells fishy, that means it has been a fish market for 16 years. <laughs> Secondly, you open the little gale, the gill. It should be pinkish, red. It should not be brown or dark brown. If there's dark brown, that means it has been in the store for 17 and a half years. <laughs> and also, you got to look at the eyeball. That's why I said, look at the eye streak, because the eyeball should be nice and clear. It should not be opaque. You touch the gale, that the scale, if the scale is nice and firm, it's not mushy, mushy, that means the fish is nice. Of course, the best thing is it's still swimming. <laughs> don't, 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 like that. Don't think. <laughs> if all these requirements met, the nice, fresh fish. Now, I want to show you how to do a very typical, popular Cantonese dish called steam whole fish. I happen to have a sea bass. You can use rock cod, you can use red snapper, nobody cares. Now, first of all, I have a fish, approximately one and three quarter to two and a half pound fish. I have couples, two to three whole green onion, some Chinese style cilantro or coriander leaves, soy sauce, you can use regular all-purpose soy sauce, or you can use dark soy sauce, and some ginger, OK? Now, it's much easier to get the regular all-purpose soy sauce. Now, the first thing I want to show you is I want to quickly cut the, the ginger, show you how the Chinese chef peel the ginger. You hold on to the piece of ginger like this, and you go, you see? <laughs> this is real business, cooking business. I'm not pulling your leg, look, you know? You st the way to peel it is, I want to show you. When you peel it like this, you're only peeling off the skin. You're not wasting anything. When you use a peeler, you use, you waste about one-tenth of those. Now, of course, 
for this particular case, I do not have to worry about peeling it because sometimes after you, because I cut it everything into julienne, put it right here, cut it right here, cut it right here, three gigantic slices, and I go like this. Chinese cooking is very musical. <laughs> you put it right here. And also, I also want to show you how easy it is to cut this. Put them all together. And then, you press this, like this, okay? Cut them all up. Set it aside. In the meantime, I want to show you how you should score the fish a little bit. When you do steaming the fish, you have to be in total control. You put your hand around the shoulder, note around here, you talk to the fish and say, how about you and me? Take a walk. <laughs> now I want to show you, let us score this. You score one, fish zero. Score two, <laughs> fish nothing. You continue to score on both sides. The idea of scoring the fish is it gives you a sense because the heat can penetrate into the fish a lot easier. So it doesn't take too long to cook. Now when this is ready, you don't put anything. Put it right here, sprinkle a tiny bit of ginger, sprinkle a tiny bit of green onion, and then you steam it over here. Now let's turn it to high. Steam it, you can use this tic-tac-dough thing, or you can use two of these to make tic-tac-dough, or you can use these to make tic-tac-dough, <laughs> or you can use one of these nice bamboo steamer, just like the Chinese chef do. You can stack them all up, you can steam a whole fish family. Put it right here, boiling water. Make sure you put it right here, and then you cover it up like this, okay? If that thing's sticking out, you say, goodbye. <laughs> Why am we waiting for this? I understand that, Samantha, you have a question for us. Yes, I wanted to know if there are different types of steamers for different kinds of food. Well, there are basically two different types of steamer. One is make out of bamboo, pork bamboo steamer. You can stack them all up. You can, one, two, three, four, five. You can cook something, takes a little bit longer to cook, here, there's something that you want to warm up here, you can cook them all up like this, okay? And also, you can just steam it right in a wok, with a wok lid, because when you buy a wok, they always come with a wok lid. Or you can buy some metal steamer. Nowadays, you got little things in between with the holes with a lid. You can do it like that too. Lonnie, you have a card question there. Yeah, I was wondering if you have to soak your bamboo steamer before you use it. Yeah, when you first buy the bamboo steamer, it has very, very strong bamboo aroma. So you got to do something about it. If I were you, I would put it and soak it in a big sink of water overnight, okay? And then also, before I use it, I would steam this whole thing by itself, nothing else. Let the steam really steam cook the darn thing. You would call steam nothing. <laughs> so let the steam really clean it up. Get that undesirable aroma out. Why I'm steaming this? I'm heating up a tiny bit of oil here, polyunsaturated oil. Heat it up. Let us heat this up, OK? Because I want to heat this up. In the meantime, to save time, we have already steamed another fish because one fish is not enough to feed so many people around here. We are having another fish right here, OK? We have a fish right here already steam, I want to show you how to do this. You transfer these, and you put it right here very carefully. Now when you steam something, you can put two pieces of green onion right in the middle, okay? And then you sprinkle some ginger, okay? Some chopped green onion. And also, you can also spring a tiny bit of coriander, okay? When it's ready, you put the hot oil. Let the hot oil sizzle in. Look at this. 
Wow! Also, put a tiny bit of soy sauce. This is the most natural way to cook food because everything is cooked in its natural juice. No extra heavy ingredient is it very healthy. Like in China, I don't know about you, in China, everybody believes ginger helps aid digestion. The way they spell relief is G-I-N-G-E-R. <laughs> Percy, I know that you have a question. Hello, Martin. I'd like to know, how do you select the right size of cleaver, and what is the best way to sharpen a cleaver? Very intelligent, important, practical question. Percy, just ask us, and I hope I can answer this. Normally, in a store, most of the Chinese people or the Chinese chef use knife like number one, number two, and number three. Number one is large. Number two is a little smaller. And I recommend you to use something like this, number three. Okay, this is number three knife. Just have the right balance. And if I were you, I would choose the high carbon stainless steel one because they do not rust. They, the blade stay really well, and it's easy to sharpen. Don't just get the stainless steel, but high carbon stainless steel. It doesn't matter if it costs a little more because the knife is one of the most important cooking utensils, okay? And also the handle should be shaped in such a way that when you handle it, very comfortable. And also the weight should be nice, balanced. When you swing it, you don't go, got stuck. <laughs> See, very nice. And also got rivets, so it lasts for a long, long time. Now. It's very easy to sharpen a knife. Use a regular sharpening stone. You push it here, put some water if it's a war, wet stone. If you oil stone, you put oil. Put this cleaver because the angle of a Chinese cleaver is very, very small. So you push it one, two, three, 15 times the same angle. Push it hard. Turn it to the other side. One, two, three, four. Great exercise. And after that, all you have to do is one, two, three, four. And I want to show you how sharp this is, wow, wow, I can't believe it. Now, now we have a nice sharp cleaver. We want to show you how functional a Chinese chef knife is, okay? First of all, you can use the knife to slice, okay? Slice, thin slices, like this, like this, like this, look at this, wow. And then you can cut julienne, stack this up and go. <laughs> Look at this. And then you can also use this to press the garlic because this is also a Chinese garlic press. Take this out, <laughs> the whole thing comes out like this. And, go. and then you can also use this to transfer food. You have the food here, and you put the cleaver here at an exactly 15 degree, and it go <laughs> like that. And also you can use this for parallel cutting, you see. Now I want to show you how wonderful this knife can be. Parallel cutting technique. Parallel to your cutting board, like this. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Now also, also, the wonderful thing is, this is a wonderful protective thing. Just in case something happens, ha, ha, ha! <laughs> wow, wonderful. And also, my mother taught me, when I was a little kid, use this to smash uh, black beans, garlic into a paste. Go, you smash it. This is how the Chinese do it. Do it the old-fashioned way. Wonderful, look at this. Now, with this a smash of black bean, I'm gonna show you how to make a dish called sizzling black bean chicken over here. In this particular dish, all we need is approximately one whole chicken breast, or two half chicken breasts, or one plus one equal to two half chicken breasts. <laughs> Cut it up into slices or cubes. And then I also have one to two tablespoons of black beans. Depends on, if you get used to it, you use more. If you're not used to it, use less. Chili pepper, whole or crushed. Charlotte, chopped ginger, green onion, one whole green onion, chopped. Also garlic, OK? 
okay? Of course, we also have about two tablespoons of dry sherry, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and a tiny bit of sesame syrup, about two teaspoons. We'll use this to marinate our chicken. Let me get a bowl here to marinate our chicken, okay? Put all this ingredient, put it right here, marinate the chicken. When you marinate, you always use these chopstick. Marinate. Why I marinate this? I understand that Louise have a question for us. Yes, Martin, how much oil do you use when stir frying? Okay, stir frying is one of the most healthy, most fun, most wonderful way to do stir fry dishes. Because the shape of the wok, you only use a tiny bit. As soon as you put the oil in, you swirl the wok a little bit around, and you stir fry it, just have enough oil to coat it. Normally, I use anywhere from one tablespoon to one and a half tablespoon. For a gigantic dish, I use two tablespoons. Do not use too much. I always use poorly unsaturated oil, you see. Let it marinate a little bit. I am going to also cut up these just in case. We have more people for dinner, and I want to show you how fast you can do. Wow, wonderful. See? Heat up the wok. When you do stir fry dishes, always make sure you heat up the wok first. Because if the wok is not heated up, you put the oil in, when you put the meat and they get stuck, you end up having chicken jerky. <laughs> One teaspoon measured precisely. And all the teaspoon Measure precisely, and all the teaspoon all together, one tablespoon, not less and not more. Now, when this is nice and ready, we are going to put this ingredient together. Heat up the wok, put the oil in. When the wok is hot, green onion and ginger and garlic, stir fry. Tiny bit of shallot, okay? Of course, we use the mesh black bean. Oh, toast the food. Okay. Save the chili pepper later because you don't want to make it too hot. Stir. Get the aroma. Can you smell it? Yeah. Wonderfully delicious. You see, in China, there are approximately 455 recipes for chicken dishes. Any chicken with half a brain will know they'll never get to the age to collect social security. <laughs> Now, when this is nice and ready, we'll put the chicken here. Wow, look at this. Stir, stir, stir. You can do it like this. If you don't have a hot plate, because this is supposed to be a sizzling hot dish to do. You can make the sauce and stir fry the chicken like this. Or you can stir fry the chicken. Then you can put the sauce and cook the sauce separately in a saucepan. Just make sure when you are using black beans, always keep in mind, put the black bean in the jar, airtight. Otherwise, everybody in the radius of 350 miles can, can tell you are fixing black beans. <laughs> if you keep it in, it will last for a couple hundred years. This little bottle, I have this here since 19, 1821, <laughs> over 150 years. You save this when, the, when you make really, really old chicken. <laughs> Antique black beans. Okay, stir fry. We're gonna season this, stir fry. I wanna show you, you can toss the food like this. Wow, look at this. <laughs> Put the seasoning in. Of course, you should also use one portion of cornstarch. Thicken it up. One portion of cornstarch mixed with one portion. Wow, toss, toss the food, toss the food. If you want, you can use a tiny bit more. Make a tiny bit more sauce if you serve this over rice or noodle, okay? Now, when this is ready, I want to show you. I have a little hot plate here, which I have heat up. Wow, this is hot. That's why you call sizzling hot plate. Stir, stir. I'm gonna serve these over here. Look, listen very carefully. Wow! Look at this one 
Thank you. Thank you. This is, it has been a ball being with you all. And I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Remember, if Yen can cook, so can you, Jackie.